Oh, hey, what's up? Come on in. Welcome to Shark Vlog, guys. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tour of our workshop. Take a look around, do a little lap. This is supposed to be our living room, but it's not. It's our workshop. About a year ago, we threw away all of our furniture, put it in a workshop. Nothing's been the same since. So let's just do a circle real quick. Workbench, pretty standard stuff. I probably use this space 99% of the time I'm in the workshop. It's on wheels, which is super important. You'll find that almost everything in this workshop is on wheels, because say we're doing a sewing project, right? And we need to cut out several, several yards of, of fabric, right? Well, it's really nice to be able to push everything from this side of the workshop over to the other side of the workshop. So here at the workbench, I've got my power tools that I use every day. And if you look over here, the battery charger is on the wall. This is probably one of the smartest things I ever bought because until I bought this, I just had a bunch of small chargers and they're laying all over the place. But this way I can plug all my batteries up before I go to bed. When I wake up to do a project, they're all fully charged. They're ready to go. It's pretty awesome. Uh, this probably looks goofy, but super, super integral to my workflow. Corkboard, right? I use X-Acto knives and scissors probably more than any other tool. And a lot of my other little hand tools. When I'm working on something, I'm pretty terrible at keeping up with stuff. So I never know where anything's at. But this way I can just kind of hang a pair of pliers there. And I don't get lost losing my tools underneath things and waste a bunch of time. I'm terrible about that. So that helps a lot. All right, so let's move on. This is one of my workstations. One of many. Check it out. This is my soldering station. If you look over here to your right real quick, there are four orange carts over there. Those are the rest of my workstations. Each one of them has a different set of tools on it. This is just one soldering. You have my multimeter, different soldering iron, solder, torches, you name it. Again, it's on wheels. It can be gotten out of the way. It can be pulled over if I'm sitting here at my workbench. It can be pulled over here while I'm working on something else. Super helpful. This is our sewing station. Probably one of the parts I'm most proud of. We've got all our threads on the wall, all, all uh, sorted out. And what's pretty cool is that we've actually got pre-threaded bobbins. If you don't know a lot about sewing, this probably isn't going to mean a lot to you. But sewing has always kind of been something that we have to do a lot for projects that we work on but it always is probably the part that we put off to last because we hate it the most because it takes a lot of setup to get a sewing machine going right. And part of that's threading bobbins and stuff. So the idea here is you can sit down, pick your color thread, match it with your color bobbin, and get to sewing immediately. And all the tools, the hand tools are here ready to go, scissors, rotary cutters, uh, clippies. We use clips way more often than pins, though we do have some pins ready to go. These are just little Ikea um, sorting bins that you find in actually the kitchen section, I think. But you know, here's our sewing machine needles. I've got baggies in here full of regular hand needles of different sizes. Large hook needles, uh, medium needles, and the small ones are in there. Some buckles, snips, just the tools are here ready to go. And that's something else that you'll find in this shop that we've worked really hard to establish is just where everything goes it goes back there when you're done with it and the sewing the sewing station is probably a perfect example of that something else funny over here if you look at this word pad i'm a scribbler and it's you know truth be told i have a really terrible short-term memory and anyone who knows me knows this so i've got these pads all over the walls in this workshop so that when i'm writing when i'm working on things and i forget numbers and i forget I won't forget anything because I scribble everything down while I'm working on it. The next part of the workshop is probably one of the coolest. This is my 3D printer. I don't use this a ton, but I use it to save my life in very, very random situations. In the last year, I've used it to print a very small piece of a camera rig so that I can go do a job and attach a piece of equipment that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. I've used it to replicate some bins for my sorting bins, which you'll see here in a minute. I'm going to get to those very soon, and that's actually a project I'm in the middle of right now. But it's pretty cool. A custom computer I've built from Goodwill Parts to run the thing off of. Not a particularly fast computer, but a usable computer that is more than powerful enough to run this 3D printer. And this is also kind of my printing station. It's just where I keep my printing paper and stuff. I actually do a lot of projects that I have to print thousands of pages at a time. And so I just keep all that right there. And then if you spin around a little bit, this is the next part of our workshop. 
Uh, Hannah actually runs an online business selling clothes. I'll link to that below this video if you're interested in that kind of thing. She sells mostly vintage. It's all pretty cool stuff. But this corner of the room is just basically for that, for storing those clothes and putting up what's ready to ship out next. And then probably more importantly, it's our shipping station. We have a lot of merch, like this shirt that you see, and we ship stuff out daily. So we stand here a lot every day, box stuff up, get it ready to go. The next part of the workshop is probably my least favorite part because this is all just really a catch-all. This is where I throw projects that I'm in the middle of that I'm not working on at the moment just to keep them out of the way. And I need a better system because it's just a mess. But I do keep my cleaning supplies up here and then I keep my camera tripods here so I don't have to run to my storage unit every time I need a second camera angle while I'm in here filming myself working on something. Uh, some of the ongoing projects are things like these. These are laptop batteries and I have more of these come in every day and what I'm doing is harvesting these battery cells out of them. First of all, I have a lot of tools that, and flashlights and stuff that run off of these. And then secondly, I'm building a solar battery of my own. It's an ongoing project. You'll see videos about it later. But to build the kind of battery I'm talking about, you just need, you just need so many of these batteries. So I source these laptop batteries and harvest them. Again, ongoing project. So I'm not working on this much at all every day, but a little every day. So this is kind of a perfect place to, for it. If I had to run to my storage unit and get these every day, It'd be maddening, but I have projects boxed up in my storage unit that I'm not able to work on right now. So those are kind of, you know, far away projects. These are medium projects. Yeah, that's it. I also have a lot of stuff on the shelf like this, sandpaper. I use more sandpaper than anyone you know. I have it all meticulously labeled 40 grit, 60 grit, 80 grit, 100 grit, 150 grit, and there's just probably 50 sheets of every single grit that you can imagine. And then I have all my sanding belts in here, circular sanding pads, and you know, I need a better solution for the sandpaper too, but right now it's just here on the shelf. This next part of my workshop is probably one of the parts that I've worked the hardest on, and that is my sorting boxes. If you're at all a fan of making, you've likely come across Adam Savage's Tested. Uh, Adam Savage is the guy from Mythbusters, and he has a YouTube channel slash website where they make all kinds of cool stuff. It's almost entirely dedicated to making and modern technology. It's really cool. You should check it out. But one of the things I got from that channel that I was obsessed with for ages and just had to end up making my own was Adam Savage's Sortimo uh, shelf. He has this shelf full of sorting boxes, and each one has different sets of nuts or bolts or nails or screws or rivets and it just when I saw it I was like that's all I've ever needed in life I'm tired of dragging out this box I used to have this box on the shelf just like one of these boxes but just with plastic bags full of screws and nuts and bolts and it was maddening to go find whatever you needed and so when I saw that on tested I was like well I've got to make my own but the problem was that those sort of mode boxes are super expensive just insanely expensive I could there's no way I was gonna afford them it's like a hundred dollars a box and then a hundred dollars for the sorters that go inside something like that it was out of the question so what I did instead I went to every store you can think of I went to Ace I went to Home Depot I went to Harbor and Freight and I looked at every different sorter box there was and I found the most perfect one for the cheapest price and I ended up on these Huskies let's look at the names pretty simple right it's a box I can carry around with ease. I have this cart that I found in the trash that somehow just magically perfectly fits. So I can do a lot of things with this. I can open this up over here at the station out of the way. I can take this box of nails. I can go over to my workstation with it. I can have it there, simple, easy. And then when, it, when I'm done with them, it's easy to go put them back. Similarly, at waist height, I can take this cart over here take my nails, do whatever I need to do. Something else I got from Adam Savage, he built his own custom cart, uh, quite similar to this, to roll his sorting boxes around. And I knew I needed one when I saw that he had one. And like I said, I found this in the trash. It's perfect. And I also, I use this thing daily for not these sorting boxes, just to put tool sets around. If I'm working on some specific project that uh, is, you know, needs tools from over there, tools from over there, they end up on this little cart and they just go with me wherever I go. So that's my sorting boxes. So if you come a little closer to the sorting boxes, you can see there's a couple different iterations of my labels. 
Uh, these regular printing labels, they just didn't cut it. Because if you look here, I'm standing here looking down. From here, I can't read those bottom ones. It was just maddening. So what I went and did is I got the vinyl cutter out and I cut just as big as I could fit in every single one of these. I cut the labels for each one of those. Now it's easy. Now I can read the bottom ones. Electrical, zip ties, fastening, electronics, wire, line, Velcro. Super easy now. And I'm just too lazy to take the old labels off. So, double label. Let's move on. You can probably hear that really, really loud noise. If there's one thing I've learned from living my life using cameras, it's that if you turn a camera on, there's gonna be a guy with a leaf blower. This next section of the room is pretty much just all the tools. If you look all the way around. It starts over here with my drill press. My drill press and my bandsaw are on the same cart. I can roll them out in the middle of the floor. I can drill press things. I can cut things with my bandsaw. And then also, all of my drill bits, there are many, paddle bits, regular bits, Forstner bits, they're all in here. And then my disc sander and grinder. And then my table saw, which is about to get moved to the storage unit because I don't use it that much, but it's over here in the corner. My scroll saw, however, on the other hand, I do use a ton. I put a 360 blade on it recently and I've been using it to cut all manner of very small parts with it. Highly recommended. Next are my carts. These are IKEA Rascog carts and two of them are actually multiple IKEA Rascogs stacked together. And so each one of these four carts has something different on it. The first one are my pneumatic tools. So I've got my small house size air compressor here and then underneath it my uh, pneumatic rivet gun, some pneumatic paint guns, extra hoses, uh, pneumatic stapler, pneumatic bits and bobs. So again, I can roll this over to the workbench and do whatever I need with it. Next cart is my glue cart, and I just have all manners of glue. I've got contact cements, super glues, quick sets, hot glue. Pretty self-explanatory but I use enough glue that this matters. Next is kind of a arts and crafts cart. I've got all my pencils and markers and paint brushes and anything I use to apply anything or write with is on top. Tapes below that and then all of my paint down here. Acrylics, oil paints, paint thinners, you name it, it's down there. I've got all the paint one could ever need. And also all the paint brushes. I mean, look at this, big paint brushes. Fan paint brushes, little paint brushes, spongy paint brushes, they're all there. And then the Mac Daddy. This is my tool cart. There is a whole video on our YouTube page, go check it out, of just us putting together this tool cart. It is three separate IKEA carts stacked on top of one another, all for the sake of putting all my most used hand tools on. Not gonna lie, it's another thing I got from Adam Savage. I worship the ground he walks on. Uh, he made his tool carts uh, out of wood, and I just thought, well, I'll just go buy something I can put together, get it done quicker, it'll hold all the tools I need. I wheel this cart over to that workbench every day, and I stand there and I work on something, and here's all my Allen wrenches, I can work on it, my tweezers, my pliers of different kinds, all of my wrench sets, they're all here ready to go. So, this is, uh, probably the mo another one of the most used things in the workshop and it's probably also one of the most ridiculous but I love it I love this cart so that's pretty much it let's just kind of take one more lap around so you can see the whole place and get a feel for it this is the living room it's just as much space as any living room has and we use it to the best of our abilities this is not ideal this is not you know this is not the perfect workshop there's many things I wish I could change I wish I had much more space. I wish I could have a five foot radius around my table saw already plugged in. So all I had to do was go over and cut to it. My biggest pet peeve in life is that I have to drag my saws or my drills away from the wall to plug them in. I wish they were there ready to go. But this is a living room. We can't do that. And, uh, but yeah, that's why we showed you guys our workshop. If you guys are super into making and you want to make in your house, you don't necessarily have to make a sacrifice as big as we do to sacrifice your whole living room for your workshop. We're just a little bit extra. But if you've got a small space, it can be done. There are many things here that could be condensed into a smaller area. 
if you want to make stuff, here's my advice to you. Make stuff. Now, get out of my house. Come on. Bye. Right. Get out. Hey, I'm a shark with a top hat, and I think you should subscribe. Go ahead, hit the button. I'll wait. Okay, bye.